Alright guys, back for another week and back to jump into plenty more championship transfer rumours. Loads to discuss today in terms of done deals and the rumours we've got going around as this new championship season is just over a week away now. Without any further ado, let's jump in. We saw Ismail Sar complete his move over to Marseille. This one was on the cards last time we spoke about it and it has since been confirmed. The details of the transfer are quite interesting as well. Watford will receive an upfront 9.5 million from the French club along with a further 7 million potentially in add-on as well so an overall package of 16.5 million which is considerably less than Watford originally bought Sar for. Uh, Watford also have a 15% sell-on clause within that contract as well which may come in handy later down the line. I think most people expected Sar to be off at some point of this window and that move has since gone through. Stoke have completed the deal for Bournemouth shot stopper Mark Travers. He comes over on a season-long loan. We all knew that Stoke needed to sort out their goalkeeping situation and they've done just that with this Travers deal. Last time Travers was in the championship Championship with Bournemouth. He was one of the best shot stoppers at this level, so I think that's a really sensible pick up there by Stoke, who have fended off some competition for that sign in. Birmingham have fended off plenty of competition to land a deal for Lee Buchanan. He joins on a five year contract, signed for around 1.3 million. Plenty of other championship clubs were interested in the former Derby fullback who's joining Birmingham from Verde Bremen. Plymouth have snapped up Everton holding midfielder Lewis Warrington on loan for the season. He spent last season out on loan with Fleetwood in League One where he had a solid campaign. Christian Fasnacht has completed his move over to Norwich City. Quite an exciting addition this one for Norwich. A fee of around 3 million is being reported. The 29 year old has an excellent record in the Swiss Super League where he'd regularly hit double figures for goals from that wide position. In total for young boys scoring 72 goals across 241 appearances is a really impressive return. He'll look to add that bit of stardust to that Norwich forward line next season. Chef Wednesday have loaned in Ashley Fletcher. Fletcher a player who's been bounced around a few clubs on loan recently and it's never quite happened for him since showing those early signs of promise at Middlesbrough. He's had a few years now where just hasn't seemed to be his regular self. Maybe Chef Wednesday can get that out of him this season, but going off his previous track record, I'm not so sure. West Brom have loaned in Jeremy Sarmiento from Brighton. All been quite quiet on the incomings transfer front for West Brom so far, but they have got this deal over the land. I think that utilising the low market will be very important for the Baggies this summer. Sarmiento is an interesting addition. Certainly got the technical ability and skills to absolutely thrive at this level. It's just a question of keeping him fit. He has struggled with a couple of big injuries since joining Brighton last season. Only played 169 minutes of Premier League football, so they've got him to get up to speed, really. After seven years at Watford, Christian Cabaselli has departed and becomes the next name in a long list of players to make that move from Watford to Udinese. Nottingham Forest striker Sam Surridge have been linked with plenty of championship clubs, but he's actually off to the MLS. Selling for Nashville on a permanent basis, he won't be signing for a championship club this summer. And we saw Stoke completing the capture of Andre Vidigal, looking forward to seeing what the Portuguese winger can add to that Stoke set up next season. Well guys there we have it, those are some of the most recent additions we've seen in the championship. Now without any further ado, let's hop into the rumours. Burnley aren't giving up on the Nathan Teller chase just yet, but they have had their latest bid rejected of around about £9 million. Now the latest reports are claiming that Burnley are going to be going in with another offer, but as of right now Southampton aren't budging on this one. You can see why Burnley would want him back, but also why Southampton want to keep him. He was one of the most prolific wingers in the championship from last season having scored 17 goals for Burnley I think he'd be a great option for Russ Martin as well in off that left hand side so Southampton very much hold the cards when it comes to this one but there will be a point where you know if Burnley do reach a certain threshold in terms of the numbers they're putting up that they will be tempted to sell but as of right now that number's not been met Burnley also still sniffing around Jack Clark and they have had their latest bid rejected for the Sunderland winger the latest bid believed to be worth around about 10 million plus a little bit in add-ons as well. Sunderland aren't interested in selling at that price. Burnley have been sniffing around a few championship clubs for some of their star assets throughout this summer so far, but with a lot of their bids, they have been unsuccessful in dipping into the championship. The Tom Cannon saga continues to take twists and turns. Plenty of championship clubs are interested. We reported last time that it looked as if Preston were close to striking the loan agreement with Everton. Plenty of local journals from Everton's side were reporting that, but 
but plenty of championship clubs are still in the race and we've had some interesting new information come out about this one. The likes of Preston, Blackburn, Birmingham, Sunderland, Stoke and Sheffield Wednesday all interested in the Everton forward and it's currently being mentioned that it could take a loan fee of around about £1 million to land him and that's just on loan for the season. If true, you'd think that that would rule out a fair few of the championship clubs. But we'll have to wait and see on this one. We looked into it on a previous video but based over an entire season, based on Cannon's goal per minute ratio last season, over a full season he'd score about 19 goals if he kept up the same ratio and that sort of strike rate is absolute gold dust to a lot of those championship sides. Preston were boosted by the fact that Cannon was at one of our pre-season friendlies to go ahead and watch but this one could still take plenty of twists and turns. Milan Van Ujic is on his way to Coventry. This one looks like quite the deal. Cov prepared to pay around 3.4 million for the right wing back. He's coming off the back of a terrific season in the Eredivisie where he scored six goals and produced an assist. 22 years old and looks absolutely rapid from some of the clips I've seen. Good creative numbers from that right hand side and another example of Coventry showing they're willing to spend the money on the right player. He comes in with the right profile at 22, someone who they can look to develop as well. Very much looking forward to seeing him if a deal does get over the line. Sunderland are being heavily linked with the move for Bradley Dack. The former Blackburn playmaker is a free agent having recently been released by Rovers and he's currently on the lookout for his next club. The link from this one obviously comes from Tony Mowbray being the Sunderland manager, had some great years with Dak previously at Blackburn and if I remember rightly I think this rumour does stretch back to January when Sunderland were originally interested in the playmaker. It's an interesting one really because it sort of goes against what Sunderland have been doing this summer so far in terms of their recruitment. Sunderland very much targeting young and upcoming players where Dak sort of on the opposite end of his career where he's coming off the back of two massive injuries injuries which I do overall think have hampered him. We're sort of in and out of that Rovers side last season, scored four goals, produced an assist. Still got something to offer in the championship, I mean no doubts about that. I think the success of this deal would probably come down to how much Dak would be commanding in terms of a wage and how much football Sunderland would be willing to give him. Eliza Mienda does appear to be on his way to Sunderland according to Fabrizio Romano. This definitely the type of recruitment we've associated with Sunderland during this transfer window so far. The Spanish under 18 international is expected to sign for Sunderland and will add another forward option to their ranks and definitely a player they'll look to develop over these next few years. Looks as if Stoke are close to sealing the deal for forward Ryan Mai. Now we did report on this one previously in the window. There was one stage where I think Preston had inquired about a potential loan deal but it appears as if Stoke have landed the deal for him on a permanent basis and a deal worth up and around £3.4 million. He'll be coming over from the Hungarian top flight where he scored 31 goals across 71 appearances. We're all well aware that Stoke desperately needed to fill that striker spot and it seems as if they've got one of their main targets here. And it looks as if Leeds United have won the race to sign Carl Darlow. I think this will be an excellent addition to that lead squad this season. They are in need of an experienced goalkeeper. I don't think there are many better at this level than Carl Darlow. Really impressed with him during that loan spell in the second half of last season with Hull and plenty of championship clubs were chasing his signature. Previously Hull, Middlesbrough both in the race. We saw Bournemouth from the Premier League as well also interested but perhaps the best thing about this deal is how cheap leads are actually getting him for. It's been reported that a deal could have been struck for around 400k which I think is a brilliant deal considering some of the numbers that were being reported earlier on in the window which were way higher than that figure. And it could be a big week for Leeds in terms of potential departures as well. As of recording they have kept hold of a fair few of the big names who by this stage I thought would have already left. Wilfred Nonto is one of their most in-demand players right now being linked with a few clubs. Everton seems to be most interested in taking the Italian winger but as of recording doesn't appear as if an official bid has yet been lodged for the teenager. Perhaps expecting a little bit more clarity and movement on that potential deal over the next few days. And at this stage, it's Somerville, who's the other Leeds United player who is being heavily linked with the move away at the moment, with Crystal Palace said to be big fans of the winger, particularly now that Wilfred Zahar's exit has been confirmed and they won't be signing a new deal with Palace upon him signing for Galatasaray. Palace will be stepping up their interest in bringing in a new wide man before the season begins, and it appears as if the Leeds United winger is high up on their agenda. And it looks as if Preston youngster Jacob Slater is on 
his way to Brighton. He was handed a few first team opportunities last season. Really impressed me during pre-season. But it appears as if the Premier League club have struck a deal for the left-sided defender. Will be interesting to see how much money North End get out of this deal. I'd hope a little bit considering his potential. But Brighton obviously have an excellent eye for picking out young talents. And it seems as if they've got their man in Slater. Massive blow for Wigan Athletic as Jack Watmore has left the club after having his contract terminated. Despite Wigan trying their best to keep the player, he will be moving on and is now being linked with a move away. It seems as if Preston North End is the preferred destination at this point in time. And as a North End fan, I'd definitely take this one. Obviously, he'd be following in the footsteps of Will Keane, who's moved over from Wigan to Preston this season. But what more I thought was one of Wigan's better performers last season and the centre-half position was definitely one which we needed to bolster up for me. Cardiff are reportedly exploring a potential loan deal to bring Kiefer Moore back to the club. Now, this would be an absolutely huge sign and just the sort of player that Cardiff are in need of. I mean, this is a guy who's previously hit 20 goals for them in the championship only a couple of years ago. Coming off the back of a solid Premier League campaign where he played over 1,200 minutes, chipped in with four goals in that time, was more often than not used as an impact sub for Bournemouth. But he's such an effective player at championship level. Not just the goals that he brings, but his overall play I think would be so valuable to that Cardiff side. We'll wait and see if there's much more movement on that front over the next few days. But guys, there we have it. That will now wrap it up for today's video. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you did go to enjoy, make sure to leave a like and do get all your thoughts in the comments down below. Well, for that though guys, thanks very much for tuning in and I'll see you all in the next one.